Anyway, let's go, let's go further. Now let's look at example one, and this is involving with this function right here, square root of, uh, I mean, a cube root of x. So approximate the following, part A says approximate the following function by Taylor polynomial of degree two at a equals eight. And then B says how accurate is this approximation when x is between uh, seven and nine. So we're gonna be approximating at a equals eight. So let's obtain the first three derivatives of f at a. Yeah, so to get the uh, Taylor uh, polynomials, we also have to get the derivative. So the first one, the zero derivative is just f of x. This just equals two. Well, uh, three. Uh, this is cubed x. Now this right here, this just equals to write it in the power form one over x to the power of one over three, like that. Now we plug in f of a, which is eight. This is going to be uh, eight cubed. And eight cubed is going to be again uh, uh, three num uh, one number times itself uh, three times to get eight. So that's just two two. So in other words, two times two times two is eight. Yeah, so that's two like that. So circle this one. The next one is going to be f prime of x. It's going to equal two. Remember the power rule. This just goes down. It'll be one over three, and then we subtract one from it, so in other words, three over three, subtract from it, it's gonna be negative two over three. So one over three minus three over three, is gonna be uh, negative two over three. And then the plug in this one, f of eight, this equals two, let's plug this inside, this equals to one over three, and then eight, yeah, so this is gonna be, I'll put this, and this is gonna be a negative, like that. I'm just gonna put this at the bottom, this is gonna equal to eight over two over three. And to uh, save space, I'm going to actually write this uh, better than that. I'm going to write this as 8 to the 1 over 3 squared, because we already know this one is, is 2. Yeah, so in other words, we get a 2 squared now. <laughs> 2 squared is 4. And then 4 times 3, just make it save time, so 1 over 12. So that, that's the next level MES uh, <laughs> algebra there. All right. Are right, going further? The next one's going to be the second derivative. So we're going to do three derivatives. Let's just uh, one, two, and the reason we're doing three derivatives here is because well, one degree two, but then for approximation, we also want to get uh, one after that for for the for example Taylor series and even um, and even the estimation theorem. So this one's always the next one. So we also want the n plus one, and even this one we want the uh, n plus one over here. And so we also want the the one after. It's going to be f double prime of x. This equals to one over. I mean, now let's put this down. So one over three. Yeah, one over three. Put this. Uh, bring this uh, negative two over three down. So it's going to be uh, negative two over nine, multiplied by the one over three. And then it's going to be x to the negative, and then mi minus another uh, 3 over 3, or another 1. That's going to be uh, 5 over 3, like that. So x to the 5 over 3. So I'll put this better, so x to the 5 over 3, and then put this, calculate this out. f double prime, yeah, so the second derivative at 8. This equals 2, and let's just see what we could do now. So it's going to be negative 2 over 9. This one bring this down as well, and then uh, and then and then uh, yeah, just uh, use this uh, use this eight over one over three again. I'm just gonna put this down. I guess this equals to one, and then let's see what we could do. This is gonna be um, yes, yeah, so this is gonna be eight one over three. That's just gonna be our two. So we ignore that. So it's gonna be two to the power of five. Yeah, just to save space. <laughs> And now this this uh, cancels with this it becomes a one. This becomes a four, and we'll try to do this all in one go. So this is going to be uh, two to three is eight. So eight times two. So this is going to be again. This is going to be uh, eight times two, which is two to the four. Two to the four equals to eight times two, which is two to three. Yeah. So this just equals to sixteen like that. So that's sixteen. Now sixteen times nine. Let's put this over here. Times nine. Uh, nine times six is, uh, I think that is, yes, 54. Because remember, nine times five is 45, and then add another nine, is gonna be 54. Four, five, nine times nine is nine, plus five is 144. So that's this one multiplied by uh, this right here. Just put this all in, <laughs> just put this in a blob like that. 
and this is this right here this is a bit better uh, and like that and now this equals to uh, negative 1 over 144 like that and then uh, lastly let's just get the uh, other derivative so f uh, double I mean triple prime of x this one uh, we don't need to solve it directly we could just take this derivative so this uh, negative 5 over 3 uh, bring this down it's gonna be now negative is gonna cancel It's gonna be uh, 2 times 5 is 10 and then 3 times 9 is 27 yeah, so 10 over 27, and then we add another, uh, subtract another, another uh, 3 over 3, so it's going to be negative 8 over 3. All right, so yeah, we'll just stick with that. We don't need to solve it uh, directly right now, yeah, because we're not using this in the actual Taylor polynomial. We're just using it in the approximation, so we'll deal with that later. So that's the second degree Taylor polynomial is... Yeah, this is going to be uh, t2 uh, two, like that second degree is going to be well the first we're going to have the uh, the function f of 8 plus again we always know it's going to be the derivative divided by factorial 1 factorial times x minus 8 power of 1 then plus uh, f double prime of 8 divided by 2 factorial x minus 8 2 fact uh, to power of 2 like that Now we can plug in our values. This uh, f of 8 is equal to 2. And then uh, the next one's going to be 1 over 12 and negative 144. Yeah, and uh, so on. So let's just go here. So this is going to be um, yeah, 2 plus, and then this is going to be 1 over 12, and then this is going to be x minus 8. And the next one's going to be uh, 144 divided by 2. There's an extra 2 factorial, just 2 times 1 is 2. That's going to be 288. So we're going to plus, um, let's say it's going to be a, a minus there, so it's a minus, uh, minus, uh, this is going to be uh, 1, 2, 88, like that, and this is going to be x minus 8 squared. And uh, thus the desired approximation is, is just uh, over here, so our function f of x equals to uh, 3, uh, I mean cubed x like that. This is approximately equal to t sub x. I'm um, t2 sub x. I'm t sub 2 or yeah of x and this equals to uh, our 2 plus 1 over 12 x minus uh, 8 minus 288 x minus uh, 8 like that squared and this box this whole thing out like that. Yeah, and uh, that is our approximation, and now let's look at part B. Let's just scroll up. So part B states, how accurate is this approximation when x is between 7 and 9? So let's just scroll up over there. So uh, note that uh, the Taylor series is not alter alternating when x is less than 8, so we can't use the alternating series estimation theorem in this example. And uh, what I mean by this is, well, we'll see that it's not alternating. Uh, we can take a look at these derivatives. Notice the derivative goes from here, it's positive. Then, then when you plug in, yeah, when you plug in x between, uh, yeah, when you plug in x between 7 to 9, it's always going to be positive there. And then here, it's going to be positive still. This one will be negative, then becomes positive. Then we take the derivative again. This negative goes down. It's going to be a negative. But it's not going to be alternating. I'll show you why. I'll just uh, make a table to show the signs. So if we have n like that, say this is n, so when n is 0, and let's just write f n of, uh, just put x like that, this is going to be, the first one's going to be 1 over uh, 3, uh, yeah, I mean 1 over, uh, not 1 over 3, it's going to be x to the 1 over 3. And then what I'm going to do now is put it like this. Actually, I'll just leave it like that. And the next one I'm going to do is look at it when x is less than 8. And we're going to look at these values here. So uh, even though this is alternating negative to positive, then goes negative again, uh, this x minus 8, you have to account for those. So we're going to have, uh, I'm going to put this, the only things that are going to affect the signs, because these constants aren't the, the uh, the factorials won't, won't affect it, so the factorial is always going to be positive. Only So only the derivatives and the x minus 8 uh, to the power of n will uh, affect it. So I'm going to put x minus 8 like this. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, to the n. So I'm going to put that. So the first one is going to be, well, x minus 8 to the power of uh, 0. That's just equal to 1. Yeah, and then I'm make one more table just to show the sign. And this is when x is uh, less than 0. So for 
x is less than, I mean, uh, less than 8. So for x is less than 8, we have, uh, we're going to have to have x minus 8 is going to be less than 0. Yeah, because this is going to be less than 8, so we're going to have, a, for example, 7 minus 8 is going to be uh, 1. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, always going to be less than 0. So the sign is going to be here. This one's going to be plus, and then times it by plus. So this one, when you plug in, yeah, when you plug in 8, this one's going to be 1, so that's going to just leave it as plus. Yeah, so that's the only time it's going to be plus, it's going to be plus 1. And now the next one's going to be n equals 1, and we know the derivative of this one is just this is over here, 1 over 3. So 1 over 3, x to the negative 2 over 3, like that. I'm just going to go, yeah, I'm just going in uh, extreme detail because uh, my calculus book doesn't, it just says it's, uh, that, that's pretty much all it says. <laughs> so let's just go uh, further. I just wanted to illustrate it further. So next one's going to be x minus 8 to the power of 1. Yeah, so this one's going to be 1. The second one's going to be, this is going to be a negative. So this part right here is going to be positive when you plug in 8. So for x is less than uh, 8 or greater than 7. Uh, now it's going to be, it's going to be plus and a negative. Because it's power of one, it's odd. So this equals to negative. So here we alternate from plus to negative. All right, all right. Let's just keep going. The next one's going to be a two, and then when we do two, the derivative is uh, is over here, negative two over nine, and the next to the uh, negative five over three. So uh, we can uh, we can just ignore that. This, this negative is going to go down, or actually, we'll just keep it down like that. So let's make it for completeness negative uh, two over nine. This can be x minus five over three. So it's going to be a negative there. This one's going to be an x minus 8 uh, squared, so that's always going to be positive. So then this one's going to be negative, and then times a positive. So negative plus, so we get a negative, so it's not alternating there. Next one's going to be this uh, 3, that's this uh, this third derivative of 10 over 27. It's going to be positive, because the negative goes down, so it's going to be positive. 10 over 27, x to the negative 8 over 3. So that's going to be positive. This one's going to be, uh, this is a squared, x minus uh, 3. So that's going to be negative because uh, x minus 8 is less than 0. So we're going to have a plus and a negative, which equals to negative. So there's not alternating. The next one's going to be uh, 4. This one's going to be a negative. We'll just uh, leave it there. So it's going to be a, a negative there. This one's going to be a x minus uh, 8. It's going to be positive. So we're going to have a negative plus and then this equals to uh, negative, and it's always going to be negative. So if you keep going on and on, it's going to be just negative. I'll just put this uh, dot, dot, dot here. Dot, 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 it's going to be negative. So in other words, it's not alternating. So I'll just write it down like here, not alternating. So we can't use the alternating uh, uh, estimation theorem. The alternating series estimation theorem. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to go over that in detail. So it's not alternating, but we can use Taylor's inequality with n equals to 2 and a equals to 8. So again, let's scroll up to Taylor's inequality. So basically, we look at this for its uh, radius of convergence. So we take the n, uh, n plus 1 derivative, and then and, uh, if it's less than or equal to capital M, then the remainder, uh, the R, R n remainder is going to be less than this M, where the factorial is n plus 1, and then this, this power is going to be n plus 1. So let's just take a look at that, or let's just write it down right here. So n is 2, so we're going to have to have f uh, triple prime of x, which is n plus 2, I mean n plus 1, so uh, so 2 plus 1. This is the absolute value is going to be equal to uh, the third derivative. So let's just look at the third derivative. This is the third derivative right there, 10 over 27 over uh, yeah, 10 over 27 times x minus uh, negative 8 over 3 and where uh, this one is going to be less than or equal to m. So if it's less than or equal to m, then what we have is the remainder r2, so n is uh, 2, of x like that. This is equal to, the absolute value is going to be less than or equal to m over n plus 1, which is going to be 3 factorial, and then times by x minus a, which is 8, to the power of now n plus 1 is, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3. And uh, now we can uh, solve for this m. Well, we know that uh, this maximum value can be is, well, because x is greater than or equal to 7, because remember our range we're given is between 7 and 9. And this is a uh, inverse uh, function right there. So this is going to be x uh, to the power of negative 8 over 3. So in other words, it's going to be 1 divided by x to the power of uh, 8 over 3. So the larger the, the value of x, the smaller it is. So in other words, the, the, yeah, so, the, so the smaller the value of x, the bigger the number is. So thus we have... Uh, because x is greater than or equal to 7, thus we have to have x uh, to the power of 8 over 3 is going to be greater than or equal to 7. 
to power of 8 over 3. So that's going to be our maximum value. Yeah, and so what we'll have is the third derivative, f triple prime of x. You have the absolute value. Well, in this case, it's going to be just uh, f triple prime of x. We don't need to take the absolute value. It's always going to be positive. This is going to be uh, equal to, you know, let's just write it for completeness, 10 over 27 times x to the uh, 8 over, uh, to the uh, negative 8 over 3, like that. This is going to be less than, uh, yeah, we can just put, uh, yeah, less than or equal to, yeah, because it could equal 7, so we include that uh, equal to sign. So less than or equal to 10 over 27, and then we could write 7 times, uh, yeah, 7 times 8, like this, uh, negative 8 over 3. Or uh, as my calculus book wrote it, just in this case, you just write it as uh, 1 over, and then just x to the 8 over 3, just to show that. Yeah, the larger the x, the smaller the value, and the smaller the value, the larger the x. So it's going to be uh, 7 over 8 over 3, like that. And now if you plug that into the calculator, I'm just going to move this over here. Uh, this is going to be, well, it's going to be less than 0 0.0021. Uh, yeah, and here's a quick calculation check. We're using my OneNote uh, built-in calculator. So calculation check, 10 over 27 times 1 divided by 7 to the power of 8 over 3. So you can just uh, press equal space and it automatically calculates 0 0.0021 so epic epic stuff so therefore we could take m equals to 0 0.0021 which is the maximum value of the third derivative over here for our given interval and also our given interval obtains what we could get is well we're given that it's going to be x is less than or equal to 9 uh, greater than or equal to 7 so if you write this out because we're going to need to solve this x minus 8 there so let's just uh, solve that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by uh, 8, so minus 8 like that. So we're going to get 7 minus 8 is going to be negative 1, less than or equal to x minus 8, less than or equal to, uh, this one's going to be 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. So in other words, uh, that's what we have is the absolute value of this, ab uh, absolute value of x minus 8 is going to be less than or equal to 1. So we're going to box this out, and we're going to throw this inside our inequality. So we know that this one is uh, less than or equal to 1. So And then uh, 1 to the cubed is going to be just 1. So yeah, so then now uh, we plug this into the Taylor's inequality. So Taylor's inequality uh, then gives, uh, let's just write this all down in completeness, write the whole thing out. So Rn of x, absolute value, is going to be less than or equal to capital M over 3 factorial, and x minus 8, absolute value, to the power of 3. This is going to equal to, well, it's going to be less than or equal to, yeah, let's write this uh, for completeness, it's uh, in fact going to be, yeah, in fact, instead of this equal one, because this is uh, an approximation there, it's actually going to be less than that. So for completeness, even though my calculus book says less than or equal to, I'm just going to put less than like that for completeness. So this is going to be 0 0.002, 0 0.0021. Yeah, so we'll put 0 0.0021 now divided by 3 factorial is going to be, well, uh, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. That's just going to be 3 times 2 is 6, like that. And the next one is going to be, well, times by 1. Uh, yeah, this can be times by 1 cubed. <laughs> so the absolute value of x minus 8 is 1, uh, is less than, yeah, equal to 1. So it's going to be the maximum value is going to be 1 cubed, which is just, uh, yeah, which is just 1. <laughs> so like that. So it's going to be less than or equal to, and if you uh, divide this out, or I'll just uh, do that right, uh, I'll just put it like this. Yeah, this just equals 2.0021 over 6, like that. Or actually, yeah, this this pretty redundant. So this is going to equal to uh, 0 0.00. It's going to be less than 0 0.004, like that. That is our approximation, and I'll do a quick calculation check. Yeah, and uh, now if we just do a calculation check right here, so 0 0.0021 divided by 6, i just uh, show you calculates, press E, uh, space. Uh, yeah, equals to 0 0.000, uh, yeah, there's an extra uh, zero there, actually, yes, I got this <laughs> wrong, zero, four, yeah, so there's, that's why you always got to do calculation checks, because, uh, yes, you don't want to make mistakes, so yes, uh, I just forgot a zero. So, uh, thus, if uh, x is between uh, seven and nine, the approximation in part A is accurate to within 0 0.0004. All right, let's go uh, further. And uh, let's go further, and, and now we're going to actually revisit example one, and now we're going to just use a graphing device to check the calculation in example one. And the figure below shows that the graphs of f of x and t2 of x are very close to each other when x is near 8, so you can uh, graph those out. So here's f of x equals 2, 
Yeah, equals to uh, x uh, cubed uh, like that. I mean, x over 1 over 3, so x uh, cubed root. So that's the one in, in solid block like that, goes like that. And then when you graph t2 uh, of x, it's equals to yeah, 2 plus 1 over 12 times x minus 8 minus uh, 128, uh, 1288, and then times x minus 2, not minus 8 power of 2. So you can see in near this 8 uh, value there, somewhere around there, these are very, very close together. Uh, we can also graph the remainder computed from the expression, and if we just write the remainder as r2 of x ups of value, which equals to uh, like this, yeah, or uh, just put fx, fx like this, minus uh, t2 of x, like that. And now if we graph that out, we can see how accurate it is, and it's absolute value of it, that's all we want to see. Yeah, so when we uh, graph this out, so what's right here, r2 of x is equal to absolute value of uh, x, uh, absolute value of f of x minus t2 of x, or t sub 2 of x. We get, uh, so here it is how the graph looks like, which is very interesting how it looks like. So it looks like something like this. Notice how it's super close to 0 near 8. It also has a peak over there, and so on, so some spikes. But anyways, what we're interested in is this part near 8. So when we scroll into that, and here what I've done is I've graphed the lines. So uh, I graphed y equals 0 0.0003. So that's this, yeah, that's this line right right across. And uh, the y one's going to be horizontal. So that's this one right here. That's y equals to 0 0.0003. And notice how this uh, red line is the remainder. And then here is between uh, x equals to 7 and x equals to 9. That's in between there. And I've, I've grow, graphed those x equals 7, x equals 9 uh, lines to show you that it's within it. So the error is within 0 0.003. So it's, it's less than that. So it goes from, uh, yeah, this is the zero line across there. And then, yeah, so this is below <laughs> 0 0.0003. So in other words, the remainder is less than uh, 0 0.0003, which is better uh, estimation than our less than 0 0.0004. Uh, and this is four again between seven and nine. So we, we see from the graph uh, that, uh, let's write this down, r2 of x is uh, the remainder is less than 0 0.000, so three zeros, uh, and then when x is between seven and nine. So when x is greater than or equal to, uh, x is greater than or equal to seven and less than or equal to uh, nine like that. Yeah, so uh, thus the error estimate from graphical methods is slightly better than the error estimate from Taylor's inequality in this case. So, yes, yeah, so if you can graph it like this, we have a powerful graphing calculator like uh, Desmos calculator. Yeah, in, in some cases better than using Taylor's uh, inequality. But nonetheless, both are good.